What up, Fight World? This is d Ross in man Boxing coming at you again with another hot topic, a great bar burner to discuss. That's Kobe Covington versus Jorge Masvidal. Kobe Covington is the favorite of this fight. Everybody's picking him, but they believe that he's going to be that guy that's going to be able to drag um, Masvidal down and hold him down. But listen, either way go, this is a fight. It's going to be an exciting fight from top to finish. I can't personally wait to see the fight. Given the history of these two guys, that's how the UFC is selling this fight. It's Kobe Covington stay, sleeping on Jorge Masvidal's couch and then somehow separating from the pack and now these two are going at it. This is some heated stuff, some stuff that's been said that, listen, listen, if you said that stuff to me on the streets, I'm going to take, I'm, I'm going to hurt you really bad. There's certain things that you just don't step, certain things you don't say, a man never approaches. The reason why men don't get into a lot of altercations out there in the real world, why? Right? Because there's just a certain boundary that we know not to touch. He's talked about my wife and he's talked about my children. What do you say to that? If he wasn't a piece of deadbeat dad, he doesn't even talk to his kids. He's tried to... Well hidden from me, man. Little bitch. Have you woken up yet? And this fight is one of those fights that I see that, you know, uh, there's boundaries that have been passed. I don't see these guys shaking hands afterwards. They both said, listen, we're not shaking hands. This is this is legit beef. This is real. You know, Kobe Covington is one of the fighters that I don't pick to win a fight, even though I do pick him to win this fight. I just hey, man, don't root for the guy. I don't like the guy. I can't no, find actually, myself. I try so he just said that eight No, I don't even ago. try. It's, he, he's one of the fighters that I really can't stand. I mean, some of the things that he says and he does, people find it humorous. They think it's funny. I don't find it funny. You know, I don't think it's funny talking about... Um, Human beings calling uh, by their race, like what he did in Brazil, calling them filthy animals and things of that nature. Brazil, you're a dog. All you filthy animals suck. I got one. Those are the type of things that I personally do not like. I understand that he's trying to sell a fight and he was going to get cut from the UFC. I got it. I got it. But there's a different way of going about it. Talking about someone's race and in the Masvidal situation, talking about people's kids, their wives. That's just something we don't talk about as men. There's a street code. There's a man code that we go by that we must follow. And I feel like character for a man is the framework of that of the man. It's the building block. It's the foundation. And without that character, without them codes that we live by, then you know you do the rest. Let the let the let the cookie crumble, so to speak. So there's just certain things that we don't talk about. This fight is a fight that both guys have gone over the line. And so I don't see these I don't see these guys shaking hands. And so I later created up so guys I beat this guy's ass or fuck. Didn't graduate oh, fuck fucking up. middle school. You know how to count. Look. You're illiterate. So this is why the fight is exciting to me personally. The reason why the fight is exciting to me is because neither guy is basically known for knockout power, right? So when you get a fight where guys can't knock each other out with one shot, even though Masvidal has highlight real knockouts over Ben Askren and Darren Till, you can see him going in there beating him with violence, bam! You know, he's that guy known for his violence. And that's what he talks about, being, being violent. He's known for it. He's he got the street fighting credentials, but if I watch all his fights, even the street fighting, he got mad people out with one knock, that one punch. That's no knock on the guy. That just tells me he's got heart. That he's a he know that he's durable. That he's there for the long haul. He's mentally ready for that fight for the long period of time. So I, personally, that's what makes the fight very entertaining because I can see these guys having to go five rounds. Rock 'em, sock 'em, robot, getting out all their anger and their aggression and just going at each, at each other. And, and that also means that the same trash talking that happened before the fight is going to happen during the fight, which makes this interesting. This is one of those things where, like, I can easily see that somebody hitting another person after the bell, bing, getting that last shot in, and then all hell break loose. Now the commission them jumping in. Hopefully we don't have that situation where we have a frenzy and they got to stop the fight because of all the commotion inside the ring. Hopefully we can get through it. But I can easily see Kobe Covington trying to say his last words and Masvidal slapping him. Damn, don't say that, right? It's going to be that. It, that's, what, I, that's what I'm ready to see. I'm, more intrigued. I'm very intrigued to see what happens when the end of the bell and they staring each other down. 
Are they gonna talk their junk? What, what's gonna happen? What's what, what's gonna, what they gonna say? That's what I want to see. You know what I'm saying? So both guys are known for talking trash, and you know I'm ready to see it happening. Um, the UFC has done a great job in promoting um, both fighters. I think both fighters done a good job building their character. They're building themselves up. They have really, truly, in the last couple of years, have elevated to um, superstar status based upon them being able to create these persona. Because both people have changed. You know, they might. I hear them both talking about this person changed, this person. No, both of the guys changed. You know, Masvidal when he first started, he wasn't calling himself Street Jesus. You know, and uh, personally, me personally, I believe that that brought bad juju on himself. You know what I'm saying? When you start saying things like that, I'm a baptized street Jesus and all the other stuff. And you get in there and you fight somebody and you, you know, that's me as a, as a, a person who fall a lot uh, as an amateur person. I, I just, it's hard because, you know, there's certain things that we don't talk about um, that we don't, a lot of people say, oh, I don't believe in, I don't believe in God or whatever. It's different when you're in the ring it's and you're getting hit Just and you're getting your tooth like knocked share, out, you're too cracked into your, into your gums, you're getting your limbs broken, you're, um, it feels like many times like a, almost a near-death experience, especially if you get hit with a really good shot multiple times and you know, so people kind of sort of change, it, 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 a lot of people, it, it, is different from I love fighting because fighting is different from my, any other sport, and so you know that's my opinion about the whole Masvidal and Street Jesus thing. I hope he stopped doing it. And um, but other than that, listen, this is a fight. This is a fight that's entertaining, and I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait to see these dudes go in and go at it. But I'm gonna tell you this: this fight is bigger than a title fight. Why? It's bigger than a title fight. Simply because this is pride and honor on the line, you know. Back in the back in the days, I used to watch these lucha libre fights when I was a child, and lucha libre was so exciting. And then you had these matches that were actually more entertaining than the actual title fights. You know, matches where there were retirement matches. If you lose, you banished forever from pro wrestling, or if you lose, then you cut your hair in the middle of the ring because, you know, in wrestling, the long hair is basically um, how these people uh, market themselves. So they will shave each other's head bald in the middle of the ring or, you know, especially like the ladies, shave their hair bald and they got to walk around bald for whatever, whatever for her, forever how long. And then they had um, the mask of the fight where they had to take off the mask. Where you, if you lose, you got to take your mask off. And in Mexico... <laughs> José Gutierrez Hernández, originario. Señoras y señores, Mexico mask was a something. It was very symbolic. It was uh, out of pride, heritage, and so fighters didn't want to take off um, their mask. So if a fighter loses their mask, you wonder, hey, is this fighter going to fight again? Is he going to leave in embarrassment? Is he going to leave in shame? How could you walk around knowing that you, you know, you have, you, you, you let down your heritage and all this other stuff? So those fights were very, very entertaining to me, and this fight is also entertaining because both guys have went out on the limb to say things and to enter into uncharted territories. For example, Masvidal said, "I can't wait to punch him and rearrange his face." If I if I have an opportunity to hit him a couple extra time after the knockout, I hope the referee let me get a couple more shots, and I hope he's late get, um, breaking up the fight. I don't want a submission. I'm not looking to submit because I just want to knock this dude out. I got bad intentions. That's what makes this fight so interesting because the pride is on the line, the heritage is on the line, everything's on the line, and if you're Masvidal, you actually added more pressure on yourself because saying these things, you can't lose to a guy like Kobe Covington. You can't. You definitely can't get knocked out. If you get knocked out by COVID Covington, then will he be able to fight again? Will he be able to continue? Uh, show, will he be able to show his face again? I mean, this is this is for all the marbles, basically. This is losing a world title is one thing, but you can't lose your 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 pride and your respect. And um, that's one thing you definitely don't want to happen because Kobe Covington will talk a lot of junk. He said the certain things you don't talk about. He said that Colby has no respect. He's talked about my wife and he's talked about my children. What do you say to that? 
What I say to that, Michael, is words, actions. If you didn't have these actions, I wouldn't be able to have anything to talk about, Michael. If he wasn't a piece of that beat dad, he doesn't even talk to his kids. Thing. You know, you know Uzma's already, Uzma's still talking about both of them. He's still saying both of them, his sons. <laughs> oh, listen, that's the, that's, that's, that's sports. And um, I think Masvidal was able to, to, to be sportsman, be a great sportsman at the end of the fight with Usman. Look, hey man, I got knocked out. I did. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know if he can be a great sportsman in this situation. This is a very, very intriguing fight based upon what I just um, stated. And uh, the other thing is this. With all of this built up frustration and tension, my question to Masvidal is, will he be able to go in there and have a clear head? Because he wants to go in there and let them hands go. But he's in there with a wrestler. So even though uh, Kobe may try to exchange with him and try to throw some punches, he always have that in his back pocket, that arsenal of being a great elite wrestler. So now both guys know who is the greater wrestler. And if Masvidal gets too excited letting them hands go, boom, 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 then he can get taken down with ease. You know, and that was it's, that's what I think led to the fight with Usman was that he needed Usman to come in a little bit. He wanted him to get more into a hand-to-hand a, a -hand combat battle, basically, because he knew that if he got too excited, he'll get taken down. He didn't want the same thing happen in the first fight, happen in the second fight. Even if you don't get taken down, having to defend takedowns an entire fight breaks the rhythm and it stops you from being able to set your traps and get the guy in Masvidal, even though he's from a street fighting background, he is a, a, a technician when it comes to boxing. So, you know, he's still looking to set things up. It's hard to set things up when you got a guy coming in with double legs and single legs and, and clinching and, and throwing you against the cage. And it's hard to get your mind. So it's a little different battle. And so you change your tactics. In the situation with Kobe, that's already in minds with the mind. He already said, look, I don't I think he's gonna fake stand up with me. That makes this fight very, very interesting for Masvidal because if that's what your mind is thinking going into the fight, man, you know, after he lost the fight with Usman, he said, Man, I spent a lot of time wrestling because I thought he was gonna wrestle. You know, that's going on in the back of his head because he doesn't have that wrestling um background, even though I believe you know his 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 defense is not bad his his ground game is not bad he's not known for it but it's not bad so anyway listen i think this is going to be a tough a tough fight i hope that masvidal use the 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 energy from this fight to train hard he has this stigma about him um that he doesn't train hard that he parties a lot we know that he has a lot going on in the world. A lot of um, he's got a he's got a lot of different businesses and ventures going happening. So the question always the question now with Mosvin in this state in this state of his um, career is can he actually focus? Can he actually be mentally prepared for a world title fight? You know, a lot of people can't handle that success. It's a very few people that can really honestly handle. All of that going on, that multitasking can consume people. It takes people away from the element that makes them great. So I don't know. We're about to find out. We're about to see what Ahmad's going to have in his heart. We about I know he is a he has heart. I know he's a tough fighter. That's proven. Just don't know if he you know how sharp he is at 37 years old. And can he go in there and shock the world? You know? Me, I think the UFC is really hoping for Kobe. Kobe is the massive favorite for this fight because they want a Usman versus Kobe three fight. That's what even Kamar Usman is talking. About. He's he's entertaining the trilogy fight because the both fights were very close. Um, Usman winning by knockout um, in the first fight, breaking Kobe's jaw, but then Kobe coming back last in 25 minutes. And then Kobe always have the, the one thing that he has is I actually hurt Usman and Usman faked the eye injury. So um, 
you can see them talking about that fight a lot. And this is my other thing. I, I, I'm trying to figure out for the life of me. How can ESPN sell this pay-per-view if you're using Kamara Usman to talk about the two fighters that he beat? I'm, I'm, I'm questioning the marketing strategy in that. How are you going to attract people and bring people to to circulate around this fight and to want to be involved in this fight if you're showing this guy saying, listen, I'm the man, I beat everybody, but I'm not fighting right now. You know, it's kind of interesting. But other than that, yo, this is D-Boss MMA Boxing. I just had to jump on here. I know this is late, but I had to talk about this fight because this fight is intriguing for me and it's exciting. I've been wanting this fight to happen for a long time. I'm glad we're going to get it. Yo, I'm rooting for Masvida, but my head says Kobe. <laughs> I just think Kobe, I think uh, Masvida hasn't beaten any elite fighters at 170. Um, other than Darren Till. But, you know, he hasn't beat anyone consistently at 170. And Masvida gets hurt. You know, he always gets dropped. He got dropped by Darren Till. Um... You know, even in his street fighting days, he got dropped a couple of times. So getting dropped is, is one of the things. And so being at 170, even though he's acclimated to the weight now, I don't know. You know, it's, it's a different ball game. I want to see, is he an elite fighter at 170? And if so, man, listen, I hope he wins. He fight Leon Edwards, get that beef taken out. And then we could talk about an Usman and uh, Masvidal three fight. This is D-Ross Airman Boxing. Hit the like button. Subscribe. On to the next one. Deuces.